EC3 and friends. I think that's what we're going to call this video. We're going to call it EC3 and friends or something along those lines. I'm sure I'll probably change my mind about 20 seconds into it. But EC3, it's Slammiversary week. It's a very, 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 very exciting time when it comes to all things Impact Wrestling, isn't it? I, for one, am excited. I don't know about you because there's so much going on right now when it comes to Impact Wrestling and so much buzz around the company and uh, just a lot of exciting things happening as we head into Slammiversary this Saturday. The main thing being uh, about all the buzz about the people that could and will be returning or debuting with Impact Wrestling either this weekend or in the next coming weeks. The ex-WWE stars that were released back in April that have by all accounts signed with Impact Wrestling. We're going to go through all of it uh, today, specifically EC3. Now, for the longest time, uh, Impact Wrestling, when it comes to hyping up Slammiversary and hyping up the new arrivals into the company, this goes back to, I mean, about May time when they first started doing the promotion for Slammiversary. They started saying... Um, about all these people that got released, they showed images of people like EC3, Drake Maverick, um, etc. Brian Myers, you name it, Kurt Angle, uh, people that had been released by WWE and said uh, uh, that these people may or may not be coming soon to Impact Wrestling. They were trying to get some buzz and my word, did it work. Impact Wrestling has had a lot of buzz ever since because... Look, people like to talk about who's going where, who's going to sign with who, where are people going, what's their next move going to do. And Impact Wrestling have been really, really smart when it comes to this because it's got people talking. It's got people interested, people that might not have been interested in the past or, you know, those people that were lapsed fans of Impact Wrestling, um, maybe even going back to the TNA days, who knows. Uh, but it's certainly got a lot of people talking and a lot of people interested. Now, when they started to do those promotions about the people that had been released, uh, hyping up Slammiversary, a lot of people talked about who could be coming into the company. Uh, since then, Impact Wrestling has confirmed that a former Impact World Champion will be returning to the company. Now, they haven't said when or where. I don't think they've been explicit, as far as I'm aware, to say that this Saturday at Slammiversary on July 18th, we're going to see a former Impact World Champion return to the company. I don't think they've been that on the nose about it as of yet. They may do in the next coming days. They've just said that their former Impact World Champion is returning soon. Uh, but a lot of people, rightfully so, are saying, well, that's going to be that's going to be Saturday. That's going to be at ex uh, uh, Extreme Rules. Oh, pardon me. It's going to be at Slammiversary, rather. Extreme Rules is the day after. Um, so people are therefore saying, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Uh, the phrase that Impact Wrestling used, now this is the point of this video. This is the point that we're going to talk about here. Uh, the phrase that Impact Wrestling used when they started to talk about the former Impact World Champion that would be returning to the company was a former Impact World Champion is returning and bringing friends with him. That was uh, essentially the quote that Impact Wrestling have been using when hyping up this former Impact World Champion returning to the company. So it's not just a former Impact World Champion, it's other names too that may not be uh, a former Impact World Champion. And again, it gets a lot of people talking, a lot of people guessing, because uh, there was certainly one, more than one name that got released by WWE back in April during Black Wednesday after WrestleMania this year. So again, a lot of people talking, going, who is, uh, who's going to be signing with Impact Wrestling? Uh, it's going to be a former Impact World Champion, but there's going to be a lot of other names too. Well, obviously people were speculating, I've been speculating, you've been speculating, we've both been speculating about who could be the former Impact World Champion to be returning to the company, who could be the other names returning to the company, who's going to be in the Slammiversary main event, right? Slammiversary main event, it's a fatal four-way match for the Impact World Championship. There's going to be a mystery fourth competitor in there, and a lot of people are thinking that is where the former Impact World Champion debuts. That's where I think the former Impact Wrestling uh, World Champion debuts, or re-debuts rather, with the company. Uh, and I've said on record now that I think it'll be EC3, but I don't think we can rule out the likes of Bully Ray and Eric Young either. Well, this took another turn last night when EC3, that man, EC3, Ethan Carter III, it's not just initials in Impact Wrestling, they actually mean something. It's Ethan Carter III, the nephew of Dixie Carter, posted a tweet on his Twitter timeline, and it said, quote, the fight begins, dot, 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 uh, 7 18 2020 of course july 18th 2020 the date of slammiversary uh, he also used the hashtag control your narrative which has been a staple of all the promos that he's been doing on his social media recently uh, and also put a hashtag three ec3 uh, which is not easy to say Th free ec3 free ec3 try to say that really quickly three times um so, and this was accompanied by a video as well. So now the video had EC3 uh, walking on the train tracks. It was obviously EC3. I don't know if you actually saw his face, maybe very, very briefly. The whole shot was sort of, it was obviously done with like a drone or something. And you see EC3 from the back and he's walking on train tracks. Not advisable, 
by the way, kids, stay away from train tracks, even if they're not being used or whatever. You have no idea what could be coming. So that's bad advice. EC free, free, EC free, but stay away from train tracks. EC free. Let's have a let's have a word of warning there. But EC3 is on the train tracks. He's walking. You don't hear him talk or anything like that. Uh, but behind him, you see what I counted to be four guys in hoodies. And on these hoodies, we had the uh, what is going to be, I guess, the new EC3 logo. Um, he's been using this on his free uh, Control Your Narrative uh, videos that he's been posting on social media. It's Essentially, it's three lines, but the middle line is slightly longer. It's EC3. Get it? You know, smart. Marketing plugs, right? Um, so you have four guys in three hoodies. Now, to me... To me, that looks like a former Impact World Champion uh, surrounded by friends, which he is bringing with him somewhere. So to me, that almost confirms that the former Impact Wrestling World Champion to be returning on Saturday at Slammiversary is EC3. And it looks like he has the friends that he is going to be bringing with him. Uh, again, I meant I think this pretty much is a slam dunk that he's going to be returning at Slammiversary. Is it a slam dunk that he's going to be in the Fatal 4-Way match? No, I, d I don't think it is because just because he's returning doesn't mean he's going to be the mystery competitor. They could easily save that position for somewhere else. I've still pitched on this channel that potentially we could see an EC3 versus Moose feud in the future. Perhaps EC3 arrives at Slammiversary. He uh, confronts Moose after Moose defeats Tommy Dreamer for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. I'm saying after Moose defeats him because there is no way in a million years that Tommy Dreamer is going to win the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. I've said before... That I don't think that this was the right move in terms of Moose's opponent for Slammiversary for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. And I say that because I think the TNA World Heavyweight Championship angle and gimmick right now is a lot of fun. I think it's really, really fun. I think that if you look back on what this angle, how it started, this also this goes back quite far actually. It goes back to April or even prior to that when uh, Impact Wrestling were teasing returning of uh, TNA and embracing the past. TNA, there's no place like home event that was meant to take place during uh, WrestleMania weekend. Uh, but they also brought it back in now uh, with Moose as the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, the real world champion. Uh, after Tessa Blanchard was away from the company due to COVID, she was uh, in quarantine or in Mexico with her, with her fiancé. Uh, you needed the world champion on the show. That was Moose. Uh, it was a fun thing. It gets people talking. People like to talk about TNA and the old uh, TNA program and logo and title bouts and all of that stuff there still is quite a fondness for that um even though some people will say that's not the case there absolutely is the case people like to talk about tna because they've got fond memories of tna it wasn't all that bad um so my point being here is that i would have liked to see ec3 maybe face moose at slammiversary or something like that i mean you're teasing him as a former world champion why not come back and defeat moose for the title bout which he did have at the time um, or have I pitched this yesterday? Why not have uh, Moose instead of facing Tommy Dreamer? Instead of Tommy Dreamer mocking it, saying I've spoken to the TNA executive committee or the TNA championship committee, and we're going to have a title bout. He was almost treating it a bit like a joke, which is true because it's not a legitimate title bout anymore, but it still has lineage. Um, I'd have rather had Moose say, you know what, this is a TNA World Heavyweight Championship. I'm only going to be facing guys who were in the original TNA or were part of TNA back in the day or former TNA World Heavyweight Champions. I'm going to have an open challenge at Slammiversary. I'm calling out all any or all former TNA World Heavyweight Champions to face me at Slammiversary for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. And then you could have done an EC3 return there. He defeats Moose and then throws the championship away and says, that's not the World Championship I want, and then goes on uh, to challenge for the Impact World Championship. I think that could have been a lot, that could have been a lot of fun. Um, but he could, and it is looking likely, he is going to be the, the fourth guy at Slammiversary. They are hyping him up as a former Impact World Champion. Um, so to me, that looks likely. Is it confirmed? Absolutely not. There could be someone else. Uh, does EC3 appear at Slammiversary on Saturday? That is almost a certainty, I would say. Is he the fourth guy? That is not a certainty. Uh, so it's still a lot of moving plates and a, and a lot of moving parts when it comes to EC3, if he competes on Saturday or not. Uh, but it looks like if you would take any of his Twitter posts or anything like that uh, into account, it looks like he is going to be there. Uh, now, what about his friends? That's the interesting part. Now, we kind of know at this point that EC3 is returning to uh, Impact Wrestling, a former world champion. But the interesting thing that Impact Wrestling have been hyping up when it comes to EC3 is that he's going to be returning, or a former Impact Wrestling world champion, rather, is going to be returning and bringing friends with him. Therefore, who are those friends? 
uh, that Impact Wrestling are teasing. There are a lot of friends that EC3 could be uh, bringing with him. Specifically, I think when a lot of people think of uh, the friends that he's going to be bringing with him, a lot of people, rightfully so, are thinking, well, does that mean he's bringing with him a lot of ex-WWE stars who were released back in April too? And I think that's probably the case. Uh, and we're going to go through a few names here that I've spoken about the majority of these on the channel anyway, but I think it's worth to go back over here in case you haven't seen any, any of those videos. So one of the names I think he could be bringing with him, one of his friends, could be Heath Slater. Now, Heath Slater, we saw him recently on Monday Night Raw, uh, I think Heath Slater has done more for his career and done more for his character and more for his reputation in that appearance on Monday Night Raw than he's probably done in the last five years or so. That Monday Night Raw appearance for me turned just so many heads and uh, really showed people what Heath Slater is really capable of. Heath Slater, because of the way that he was booked and had been booked for the longest time in WWE, had just been considered as, well, he's a comedy guy. Right, he's a comedy guy. He can go to Impact Wrestling, but he'll still be doing the comedy shtick. He might be playing air guitar. He might be doing this and that. I've got kids, right? So he'll come in and be with Rhino in a tag team, and they'll and they'll do the comedy stuff again. That's what Heath Slater will do. Well, he appeared on Monday Night Raw a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he turned heads. First of all, he looks great, best shape of his career by far. He cut a. To me, it's one of the best promos this year. It really is one of the best promos on any program this year. It was that good. It was real. It had emotion. It took a lot of people by surprise. Um, it was just great. It was great. And uh, yeah, he was booked terribly after that because Drew McIntyre beat him with a Claymore in about 10 seconds, which sums up Heath Slater's WWE run. And some people, again, will say to that, well, the WWE champion can't be going 15 minutes with Heath Slater. Rah, rah, rah. Well, come on, why not? You know, it's just it's perception in professional wrestling. It's perception. And that's what it is. Heath Slater, by all accounts, did not want to do that raw appearance either. It was Drew McIntyre, his friend, that convinced him to come back and do that one-off appearance. Um, looking back on it, I think it's great. I think the worst thing that could have happened is he could have been re-signed by WWE because of it, uh, because it was that good. Uh, but thankfully, that's not the case. And uh, he'd be a great fit for Impact Wrestling. I've said this before. I don't think he should go to an AEW. I think he'd be appearing on Dark most weeks. And he certainly have a ceiling there. If he came in with EC3 uh, in, in Impact Wrestling... There's something substantive for him to do there. There is no ceiling for him in, in Impact Wrestling. He can be an Impact World Champion. I really think so. Um, he can he can really get his career going for me if he goes to Impact Wrestling. He can do whatever he wants uh, by going to Impact Wrestling. Uh, and if he appears as one of these guys with EC3 in the EC3 hoodies, I think that's a fun stable too. I mentioned there were four guys behind EC3 on the train tracks. Stay away from the train tracks, kids. Uh, but I think that those guys that were behind EC3 were all in these sort of three hoodies. That's a fun stable, right? Having EC3 return, but also return with his own stable. We know that probably aces and eights are also going to return. We'll touch on that in a second. But then you've got some stable wars going on there. You've got EC3 with his stable. Uh, the control your narrative. They might call it that. They might call the stable control your narrative. And then they go up against the Aces and Eights who are going to be returning too. That would be a lot of fun. Now, people are going to say, should Heath Slayer be part of an EC3 stable? As a way to introduce him to the company, I don't see that's a problem. Long term, I think Heath Slayer's best use is outside of the stable. But Heath Slayer's been in stables before. Obviously, he's an original member of the Nexus, which were huge in WWE before they killed it. Uh, he was a member of the Core as well. <laughs> the forgettable Core. Uh, we're all equals. There is no leader. Do you remember that one with Ezekiel Jackson, Justin Gabriel and Wade Barrett in WWE? Uh, and he was also, of course, member 3MB, which the, it, I almost look back on that fondly now just for how great they all are ever since then. It just it sums up WWE booking of they gave these three guys a terrible gimmick. And then years later, two of them are WWE champions and one still looks great. Um, says a lot, doesn't it? Says a lot about potential there. Uh, so Heath Slayer could certainly be one of EC3's friends. Uh, someone else... Uh, some other people, uh, some people might be speculating that Gallows and Anderson. Now, we know Gallows and Anderson are coming into Impact Wrestling. That's been confirmed at this point. Uh, not by Impact Wrestling, but by various reports. Pretty much by Gallows and Anderson themselves. Whilst they haven't openly come outward and said, you know, we've signed with Impact Wrestling. Gallows is wearing uh, an Impact Wrestling shirt almost on every social media post at this point. Um, I know that Carl Anderson has been liking a lot of Impact Wrestling tweets on Twitter as well. 
Uh, the deals are signed. They, they were reportedly as good as done a couple of weeks ago, but they were signed just days later. They've already filmed content for the Impact Plus app as well. So they're, they're, they're in the door when it comes to Impact Wrestling. Like EC3, they're just waiting for that um, non-complete clause to expire. Um, are they going to be a member of EC3 Stable or with EC3 as his friends at Slammiversary? I say no. I say no. I don't think we're not going to see a Gallows and Anson appearance at Slammiversary. Rather, the opposite. I think we're definitely going to see Gallows and Anson appear at Slammiversary. In what capacity? I'm not sure. Whether it's uh, they attack the North or um, Ken Shamrock and Sammy Callahan after the Impact Tag Team Championship match. We'll have to wait and see on that one. I think most likely we're going to see Gallows and Anson uh, in Impact Wrestling as a member of the Aces and Eights. We know that that's likely to be returning. We've seen that teased on Impact Wrestling recently when it comes to D'Lo Brown and the Impact Classic moments of the week, etc. So I think uh, Gallows and Anson, when they come into Impact Wrestling, if they're to be involved with any stables, it'll be Aces and Eights. So I don't think he's going to come in uh, with EC3. What about Chris Sabin? Could Chris Sabin be a friend that EC3 brings in with him? I did a video on Chris Sabin yesterday. If you haven't seen it, it's probably be in the description box or we'll put a card on the screen as well so you can go and watch that one too uh, about his possible return to the ring with Impact Wrestling. We know that he's working with Impact Wrestling right now. He's working as a producer. He did have an ACL injury in January, but in May he started tweeting that someday he's going to say that he's going to be returning to the ring in Impact Wrestling. There were rumors that he was meant to have a Motor City Machine Guns reunion uh, with Alex Shelley back in April at the TNA there's no place like home event by Impact Wrestling so his return to the ring to Impact to Impact Wrestling isn't a million miles off it's just a matter of where and when uh, it's not a matter of if it's going to happen could EC3 bring Chris Sabin back to Impact Wrestling in storyline I think that'd be an interesting one because a lot of people are under the assumption that with these friends that uh, the former Impact Wrestling world champion is going to bring with him they're going to be just ex-WWE guys which is rightfully so but I think it would be a nice curveball for uh, Impact Wrestling to bring in someone along with EC3 that wasn't a WWE release, was just an ex-Impact Wrestling or an ex-TNA guy. I think that would be a nice curveball as if to say, this was the company that ousted me and I'm back home with EC3. I'm back. Not only is he a former Impact World Champion, but so am I. And this is the resurrection of my career. I think that's a really fun, uh, be a fun thing to do if they brought Chris Saban back like that. And in addition to that, we can't talk about Chris Sabin without talking about Alex Shelley and the Motor City Machine Guns. We spoke yesterday about are uh, the Motor City Machine Guns going to come back to uh, Impact Wrestling. I think they'd be an excellent addition to the Impact Tag Team Division. You've got the North, you've got Reno Scum, you've got maybe Sammy Callahan and Ken Shamrock, uh, Triple XL, TJ Perkins in there as well. There are a lot of fun tag teams in there, uh, but I think I think that with uh, Gallows and Anderson and bringing back the Motor City Machine Guns, that would elevate the Impact Tag Team Division just to an absolute another level. I really do. So. Could he and uh, Alex Shelley be members of uh, EC3's faction wearing the uh, three hoodies there? I, you know what? I don't think it's like a certainty, but I think it's a possibility. Absolutely. Uh, if you go back and watch the video, the, and I'll, I'll make sure I post a link to it in the description box. If you go back and watch the video of EC3's teaser that he did post last night when he's walking on the train tracks. Don't go on the train tracks, kids. It's dangerous. If you see that video of him walking on the train tracks... Um, the people behind him look to be smaller than EC3. Now, EC3 is a big guy, but he's not a giant by any means. Uh, but two guys that would be smaller than him would be um, would be Chris Sabin and Alex Shelley being the Motor City Machine Guns. What a fun way to bring them back into Impact Wrestling uh, by being in a stable with EC3, uh, wearing these EC3 hoodies, being part of Control Your Narrative, right? How fun would that be? So whilst I think it might be me doing a bit of, um, I don't know, fancy booking there or maybe trying to look in places where there aren't places about Chris Saban and Alex Shelley and the Motor City Machine Guns, why not? Why not? I mean, it's never too late. I mean, it hasn't happened yet. Impact Wrestling can certainly change the plans. And why do these friends that EC3 is bringing with him, why do they have to be ex-WWE guys? Why not be former Impact guys too? That could be a lot of fun uh, as well. Now, obviously, 
when you think of Friends and you think of EC3, you think of Rockstar Spud. And he initially, when they were hi- hyping Slammiversary up all the way back in May, they did have images of Rockstar Spud because, of course, Drake Maverick was the one uh, who was was one of the people that was released by WWE. Now, we know since then he is back with the company. Once he got released, he had the emotional video where he was crying, saying that uh, it was a dream to be with WWE and he'd have to find out what was next. That got WWE's attention. They booked him for NXT. He continued to get booked, continued to get booked. Uh, and now he's got a, a contract with the WWE once again. He's on the NXT roster, feuding with uh, Santos Escobar for the uh, NXT Cruiserweight Championship. So he ain't returning to Impact Wrestling, which is a shame. I mean, whilst I am uh, very happy for Drake Maverick, he's still getting to live his dream. He's still with the WWE. He's appearing on NXT every week. Um, I still liked, really liked Rockstar Spud. Any work that Drake Maverick has done in WWE, for me, still doesn't compare to his work as Rockstar Spud in Impact Wrestling. I'm sure he's probably got a better deal in WWE than he would have in Impact Wrestling. I mean, who knows? Um, but I don't know. It would have been nice to see uh, EC3 return with his best friend and one of the people most closely associated to EC3 in Impact Wrestling and Rockstar Spud. So that's a shame. But look, he's living his dream in WWE and he's doing things on NXT. So that's great to see also as a fellow Brit. I'll always support that. Uh, what about The Ascension? Now, this is a name we haven't heard in a while. Uh, they were released by WWE as well. Um, I would have... A lot of people, when they did get released, this is an interesting one because people thought, well, they're not going to go to AEW because I just don't think they would fit there. That tag team division is so deep and it is the best tag team division in the world, AEW, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, it, it, it just wouldn't be worth their time going there because they really wouldn't be on TV there. They weren't on TV with WWE anyway, but it would be worth going there. Impact would be a good destination for them, and I think a lot of people thought that out of the gate. Um, If you're going to look for two people to be heavies for EC3 as he comes in uh, to to Impact Wrestling, why not? Why not? I believe uh, Connor uh, was actually... Was he on the same season as uh, EC3 when he was on the original NXT back in the day? I think he might have been. You know, I think he might have been. So you could say they have history there. I don't know necessarily about Victor, but I think Connor and uh, EC3 do have some history. They were part of the original NXT. So maybe that does count as a friend that EC3 could bring in with him to Slammiversary or to Impact Wrestling in general. I think they'd be great as a, as two heavies. And as I mentioned, the, the Impact Wrestling tag team division is good. But with the additions of a Gallows and Anderson, maybe the Motor City Machine Guns, uh, maybe a couple of members of the Aces and Eights too, um, I think that this could be a, a real good time for their tag team division to be bolstered. Are the Ascension going to make Impact Wrestling's tag team division the best in the world? No, no. But I think uh, established teams, teams that have uh, like this, they certainly must have a chip on their shoulder. I mean, they were never, ever used properly by WWE. They were a mesh of... Every popular tag team rolled into one when they came to the main roster, right? They were the Legion of Doom mixed with Demolition. uh, And just as soon as you wear shoulder pads in professional wrestling and you're a tag team, uh, it's a death sentence, isn't it? Because people just say, why are you trying to be LOD? Why are you trying to be the Road Warriors? And they're not. They're the Ascension. They're something different. They were booked very, very well in NXT. uh, And once they got to the main roster, things died there. Am I speaking? Am I repeating myself? Because that's what we say all the time. But it is the truth. So... I think the Ascension would be a good fit for Impact Wrestling. I really do. I think it would be a good place to get their careers back on track. A good addition to the tag team division. And why not be the heavies for EC3 in the process? I think that would be a lot of fun. Speaking of tag teams, what about Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder? Now, obviously, we know they're friends uh, with EC3 from his WWE days. We know that um, they also have been hyping up the July 18th date on their social media accounts. Um, Zack Ryder, I think, would be a massive addition to Impact Wrestling. If he does come in, whilst I would be fine to see him team with Brian Myers, Kurt Hawkins, who, of course, Brian Myers is a former TNA World Tag Team Champion before with Trevor Lee, I would be content with that. But I think Zack Ryder can do a lot more in, in Impact Wrestling. So maybe... EC3 comes in with Brian Myers as one of his friends. Would it be Zack Ryder be the best choice for that? I don't know. I think Zack Ryder should do his own thing in Impact Wrestling because I genuinely do think that Zack Ryder has the talent, the potential, and the following and name uh, reputability to be a uh, an Impact World Champion in that company. So I wouldn't want to see him saddled in a stable for too long. I think the ceiling, um, there is no ceiling for Zack Ryder in 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 Impact Wrestling. This was a guy that was so over for WWE in 2012, 2011, and they ruined it. I don't think the ship sailed yet for Zack Ryder. I still think he has the good graces of the fans. I think still think he has the popularity, 
to pull off a big, big run when it comes to Impact Wrestling. So let's hope if he is one of those people that comes in with EC3 that he's not in the stable for that long. I think Brian Miles would be a great fit for it. Uh, but Zack Ryder as being one of EC3 friends, eh, maybe not the case. What about Mike Bennett and Maria? And now they obviously they feuded with EC3 previously in Impact Wrestling. So they have history in Impact Wrestling. They were released at the same time uh, as EC3 from WWE. I think this is going to be, um, I would really like to see Mike Bennett return to Impact Wrestling. And I think he will. I think that's the best destination for him. Again, I know I repeat myself a lot when I say this, but I don't think he should go to AEW. I don't think that's the place for him. I think Impact Wrestling is where he had his best moments in his singles career. He did so well there that he got picked up by WWE and went straight to the main roster, which doesn't happen. That just doesn't happen that often. And it didn't work out for him there. Um, he was overcoming addictions. Uh, he got himself back together, though. He's in great shape right now. Has a huge chip on his shoulder. Has something to prove. Uh, I think he could come in as a name with with EC3. I think that would work. They said they've got history in uh, in Impact Wrestling. Uh, they've had feuds. They've had matches in Impact Wrestling. Um, it would be great to have a female in the group. I like Maria Kanellis is there as well. Uh, I think that I think that combination of Mike Bennett being a friend of EC3 as they return to the company is great. Mike Bennett's only accomplishment, of course, in Impact Wrestling was an X Division Championship run, uh, and that was it. Uh, so you can't hype him up as a former Impact World Champion or anything like that because he never won it. I think the potential is there for him to do bigger and better things in this run if he does come into the company. Uh, but I think a nice way to introduce him uh, would be by uh, lumping him in, and that might not be the best term a term there, but uh, partner him, partnering him with an EC3 to introduce him and Maria back to the company. Now, what about Bully Ray and the Aces and Eights? As I mentioned earlier, I think if EC3 comes in with his friends and they have this stable called Control Your Narrative... Uh, I think a feud with Aces and Eights almost seems inevitable. We know we know at this point that Aces and Eights, they're coming back to Impact Wrestling. In what form, we don't know. What lineup, we don't know. Are we going to have old members? Are we going to have new members? I've speculated on both. Go and check the videos out on the channel here. But we know they're coming back in some form. We know D'Lo Brown's there. Uh, he wants to get the band back together. It's likely that Luke Gallows and Kyle Anson will be a part of that. Obviously, Gallows was a previous member of the Aces and Eights. We know Bully Ray is a free agent after his Ring of Honor contract contract has expired is he going to come back to impact wrestling i don't know i'd really like to see it i don't think aces and eights is the same without bully ray but uh, i haven't heard anything about that as of yet if i do of course i'll let you guys know uh, but i think a fun fun rivalry between this stable if there is one with ec3 uh, the control your narrative is the aces and eights who doesn't love a good faction face-off right who doesn't love that i think that'd be a lot of fun uh, and something that uh, we could potentially see. Now, are the Aces and Eights going to be at Slammiversary? That's a tough one. I don't know the answer to that. I think that might come slightly later than Slammiversary because there's going to be a lot going on on that show, whether it is the return of EC3, the return of former Impact World Champions, uh, Gallows and Anson coming back to the company. Well, Gallows, rather, and Anderson making his debut with the company. Maybe the Gallows and Anderson spot at Slammiversary is where they... Uh, re-debut or return the Aces and Eights there, but there's going to be a lot of moving parts. If they don't want to do that, if they don't want to uh, do too much on one show, maybe the Aces and Eights come back on the Impact after Slammiversary, although Impact, I don't know if they're going to have a bigger stage for a while than the amount of people that are going to be watching Slammiversary on Saturday, so maybe they do do it there, because there is a lot of buzz around Impact Wrestling. There is a lot of hype around Slammiversary. Who's going to be there? Who's going to be showing up? Who's the fourth guy in the Fatal 4-Way main event, uh, which ex-WWE guys are going to show up, who is the former Impact Wrestling World Champion that is going to be showing up, who are his friends going to be that are showing up as well. There is so much buzz, so much talk. Uh, it's a great weekend for Impact Wrestling, so maybe it is the best time to... Uh, return the Aces and Eights at Slammiversary then as well. So a lot going on, uh, and I'm really, really, really excited for Slammiversary this weekend. I'm debating whether to do a watch-along for it. If you want me to do a watch-along, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, uh, and we'll see what we can do about that. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to Wrestle News 365. We're over 400 subscribers now, so the next aim is 500 on our road uh, to 1,000. Once we get to 1,000 subscribers, I'll be doing live streams and watch-alongs for everything, so there'll be a lot more content coming on the channel. Whilst we're under 1,000, it's more difficult to do, so the quicker we get there, the better content I'll do for you guys, and uh, uh, and it'll be a really exciting time for the channel. It's a really exciting time for wrestling at the moment, isn't it? Be sure to follow us.
on all of our social media platforms there on the screen right now. It's at 365 Wrestle on Twitter and at Wrestle News 365 on Facebook and Instagram. As I mentioned, don't forget to subscribe. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.